On multiple occasions, I've observed women attempting to heighten their value in the eyes of men by resorting to tactics such as belittling a previous partner, e.g. calling them unattractive, presenting narratives wherein they had no fault regarding relationship dissolution, e.g. Mike was a narcissist, or bringing to a prospective or current partner's attention that other men have displayed interest in them, all of which tending to be directly followed by slight laughter. The man on the receiving end of the message usually doesn't think much of these statements, potentially due to how commonly hypoagency is accepted, but even if he were to dig a bit deeper, plausible deniability could easily be utilized in these scenarios. However, all of these tactics employed by women tell a lot more about their own personality than their previous partners, and may even foreshadow what is to be expected by the target male in the event he is to pair with them. In the first example, whether a previous partner was attractive or not, by utilizing specifically the trait of attractiveness, it displays how much value the woman places on it. Now, if it is the case that value is highly placed on this trait, one can conclude that the woman was not able to attract a mate in accordance with her own value system. Although unbeknownst to her at the time, a reality in complete opposition to the narrative she originally sought to instill upon the target male. It also shows that she is willing to belittle others and that this is perceived as an effective tactic in attracting prospective mates. In the second example, wherein the previous partner is referred to as a narcissist, even in the event this is completely true, would still fall into the category of hypoagency, as it fails to acknowledge that the woman chose said partner. Not only this, but that, at best, she possesses a psychology that is attracted to narcissistic traits and may have been unaware of them at the time of relationship formation. At worst, she was aware of these traits and for her own purposes, decided to form the relationship anyways. In the final example, when a prospective or current partner is made aware of interested alternative mates, and potentially the most common of them all, the woman is essentially projecting her attraction style onto a current or prospective mate or attempting to heighten a partner's fear of relationship loss. Although we don't know what we don't know, attempts at manipulation such as this can play out horribly. As I've spoken on in a previous video, Women, when made to judge the attractiveness of a man when he's alone, surrounded by men, or by women, tend to choose the latter. This is by no means the case for men, and can therefore not be extrapolated onto them. As women do not have to worry about factors such as paternity certainty and furthermore becoming a genetic dead end, it makes sense that they may have evolved an inclination towards mate copying or copying what other women find attractive as a risk-averse tactic engaging the value of prospective mates and especially when their valuable traits may not be so obvious. This cannot be extrapolated onto men, at least in part due to more men equating to heightened chances of not being the biological father of any ensuing offspring were they to invest in a relationship. From a proximal standpoint, women who employ this tactic may only be cognizant of the potential to evoke a sense of jealousy, this being meant to heighten her value in the target male's eyes, heighten the fear of relationship loss, or some mix of the two, as it would for her if the roles were reversed. But this completely ignores the distal implications, such as the potential for disinterest to ensue on the part of the target male, due in part to the chances of being genetically cuckolded. This is a bit reminiscent of the common saying, treat others the way you want to be treated, wherein people may resort to engaging with others based on their own value systems and therefore under the sometimes false presumption that others would want to be treated in this very way. Although this may work in certain scenarios, it doesn't take into consideration the inevitable nuances found when interacting with different people, and especially when considering the variances in value amongst men and women. On a final note, another common saying is that snitches get stitches. And here as well, essentially, women are telling on themselves regarding what they perceive as acceptable or at least effective behavior when engaging with men, generally in attempts to be perceived as having no fault in past relationships and as a potential consequence, being perceived as an optimal mate by the target male. However, as a further consequence of these tactics and negative traits repeatedly presenting themselves, as men become more cognizant of their implications, well, it could be said that snitches get kittens. Thank you for listening, and if you got something out of this content, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Consider donating or becoming a patron, and as always, here's to the research, and take care.